uh, <clears throat> and uh, I'm, I'm Igor from POA Network. And uh, POA stands for Proof of Authority. It's just kind of strange to be here, right? With, uh, uh, because our authority is, is uh, usually is, is not about, uh, is not about privacy, right? Uh, when we have authorities, we have less privacy than we uh, want to have. Um, and um, when, we, um, when we started the, the POA sidechain, the idea was uh, uh, you know, how to make a, a common like experience, uh, uh, but in, in, the, in the public network, right? How can we bootstrap a new network uh, like, like common, uh, but with uh, um, some uh, security assumptions about, about this protocol and um, you know, put it in a, in a hostile environment of uh, public internet. And um, when I think about sidechains uh, and like why do we need them, so that's my uh, that's my favorite part to talk about sidechains. Uh, uh, we really can 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 make different uh, uh, type of networks, and it's, it's much easier to experiment. Um, for example, chip computation is what you know many people are talking about. Uh, and if you compare any sidechain of work of Ethereum to Ethereum itself, uh, you'll see that the price of computation is uh, is much uh, uh, less expensive. Um, and uh, when we have cheaper computation, we can make more affordable services, and uh, and uh, and this uh, this platform with, uh, for example, lower gas fee can 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 get uh, faster market adoption, right? Because uh, uh, it's, it's 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 less expensive to to build on this network. Faster blocks usually uh, um, side chains uh, uh, trying to compare each other. You know how fast their blocks are, or how many transactions per second they're making. I think faster blocks is, uh, is important to, to, to get uh, a better user experience for users, right? Um, and uh, when we think about uh, you know, what is protecting these you know, new side chains, what, uh, what is differentiator from, uh, from let's say, proof of work, a canonical network, uh, we can experiment with a new uh, consensus algorithm. But, but basically, we more experiment with uh, Z-build control uh, algorithms, uh, um, high Hey guys, uh, yeah, you can come closer. Uh, and um, this uh, new forms of, of Z-build control, for example, proof of stake or proof of authority, uh, can can can, uh, can can help us to build uh, uh, horizontally scalable networks. Means that uh, if uh, the uh, parameters of the uh, first network is uh, not enough for us, so we can we can spin off uh, one more network uh, and make this network uh, as secure as the original network. Right? If we follow the same rules and uh, the original network is secure. Uh, we can build energy efficient networks, which is uh, quite important. Uh, thinking about uh, uh, proof of work, work is taking about 1% of uh, uh, electricity uh, worldwide. Um, well, and uh, uh, having all this stuff, uh, we still can have uh, legal benefits of decentralization. Uh, many of us uh, uh, forget about uh, why do we need decentralized technology. It's not about you know, security or reliability, uh, it's about regulation and uh, there are multiple, for, for example, in the US, there are multiple um, <coughs> uh, decisions by FinCEN uh, that allows us to, to build uh, public networks, mine them, and not be in uh, you know, money transmitter services. Right? If we keep the sense of decentralization within the network. Um, and uh, <coughs> it, uh, when we started POA, my first question was like, okay, is it, is it, is it possible that uh, uh, real people uh, uh, with uh, publicly available identity will create their own money, right? Um, and in many jurisdictions, it's not possible. Well, at least in, in the US, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's legal since uh, 2014. Um, and um, and that's, uh, that's a benefit of new forms of zebra control that we can get advantages of uh, uh, horizontal scalability and uh, energy efficient networks, but also we can keep the legal benefits of decentralization. Um, with uh, new consensus algorithms, uh, with uh, new forms of zebra control like POS or DPOS or POA, uh, we can uh, get benefits using uh, on-chain governance. Uh, uh, with on-chain governance, uh, networks uh, can decide uh, about uh, uh, parameters of uh, master nodes or validator nodes. For example, they can increase uh, some um, uh, computational resources or or <coughs> or agree on some form of resources like in Cosmos or EOS, or they can upgrade it uh, when network will get uh, more more usage, right? Um, so it's also it's, uh, it's easier to perform protocol upgrades uh, when uh, there is a, a supermajority who can vote for for protocol update and the network will update. And we can see this in in, a, in a new generations of networks uh, like Polkadot and Tezos and POA, where there is uh, 
uh, type of protocols update uh, um, exists on consensus level. Well, also the challenging governance can, can give some transparency, which we don't have in proof of work networks, how decisions are made, who voted for them, and so forth. Uh, when we start side chains, it's good that we can uh, customize uh, distribution, we can cr play with uh, new security models like um, uh, have uh, hard spoons, which I will uh, talk about soon, uh, where we start networks without uh, uh, pre mine and without inflation at all. So, like, uh, create uh, <coughs> networks without uh, 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 first economic incentives, uh, but still viable because uh, it can be used for. Um, with, uh, with uh, interoperability protocols, they can be, they can be used with uh, bridge tokens from another network. And also, um, we can play with uh, self-sustainable protocols. It's uh, kind of, I think that uh, uh, not many developers of uh, new networks think about, okay guys, you raise money on a crowd sale, and after you spend this money, you have your token, you spend your token, and what's next, right? How are you going to uh, support your network after that? Uh, and self-sustainable protocol can can create um, uh, like additional inflation, which will support uh, ongoing maintenance or, or R&D of these networks. Right? Uh, for us, uh, <coughs> uh, this um, we have a model similar to EOS, uh, where uh, the network from the second year will create additional emission. This emission will be um, uh, decided by validators uh, how to spend it on R&D or you know, burn it or, or hold it for for some for other people. Okay, so we have all these uh, interesting ideas around um, uh, side chains, and, and we see that people experiment with uh, different types of side chains, right? Uh, and um, uh, when we think about use cases uh, for for uh, public blockchains and cryptocurrencies, uh, you know, what's the like, first use case uh, for us? It's uh, what cryptocurrency, right? Um, yeah, cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency. What is the second use case? Second use case usually is uh, anyone. ICOs, tokens, uh, that's what uh, bring a lot of attention to Ethereum and put it on the second place. Right, what, what is the third use case? And uh, you know, many people think that the uh, third use case can be, you know, for example, games or privacy preserving transactions. We don't know yet, right? But privacy preserving is something that we're talking about uh, a lot, especially here. Um, so that's why uh, I'd like to share uh, our uh, view on, um, uh, on protocol upgrades uh, of POA. And we plan to launch one more. Uh, EVM network because it's uh, it's quite easy uh, when you're following existing protocol to 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 make modifications and uh, combine from from existing parts or from existing research um, combine some something. For example, uh, uh, let's think about okay, we want to to, to create a privacy preserving EVM side chain, um, and um, you know when we build something small, we can um, we can easily easily. Um, um, try some new ideas, you know, like to build something, to break, to repeat, and then to get it again. For example, um, if you remember uh, zero knowledge uh, uh, proofs in, um, um, in Ethereum, Byzantium hard fork requires some, uh, uh, some math, for example, right? And uh, this math is, uh, is quite expensive in, in, in current uh, uh, Byzantium hard fork. And uh, we think that uh, can be reduced uh, um, on side chain, it can be reduced, and this type of transaction can be it can be easily built uh, on on the side chains. Um, and we think that we can we can take uh, some industry uh, best practices and combine them with uh, um, uh, on on a side chain, uh, attaching some, for example, censorship resistant consensus algorithm and some surveillance resistant networking layer, and some um, uh, transaction privacy, uh, for example, smart contracts, and add some uh, interoperability. And uh, combining all these things, we can really get uh, uh, some new type, new type of shard. And this uh, uh, side chain we call shard uh, can perform these functions, right? Um, so our new side chain we call it Zoom. Uh, so it will have a censorship-resistant consensus. Uh, so it both, uh, uh, when we think about censorship, it's uh, it's both uh, uh, like uh, we think about external censorship and internal censorship. Means that um, uh, validators can. Um, uh, try to censor some types of transaction within the network, and the consensus algorithm should uh, protect uh, users from, from, from this type of attack. And also that uh, uh, network uh, can be under DDoS, uh, and this is internal uh, censorship, um, usually used by state-level adversaries when they're you know, trying to split the network or um, uh, DDoS the network. 
Um, and um, so for, for this censorship resistant uh, consensus, we uh, plan to use Honey Badger BFT, and I'm going to talk about this uh, consensus algorithm in the next slide. Also, this, uh, this side chain, uh, it, we will start it with, with uh, in a uh, hard spoon mode. So in hard spoon mo mode means that uh, it will not have uh, 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 pre-mine, so zero tokens when the network will start, and it will not have any emission within. Uh, so native currency of this uh, uh, side chain uh, can be bridged from another chain. So we can use a, a two-way packed bridge and send, for example, Ethereum from Ethereum to the uh, to this um, Zoo chain, uh, and this uh, bridged Ethereum will be a native chain, a native currency of this uh, Zoo chain, right? So, uh, for example, in Ethereum you have 100 million of Ethereum tokens, but you don't use them. Uh, and you can bridge, for example, 100 tokens to a new side chain and use these tokens as a native currency uh, of this uh, uh, side chain. Uh, for validators, it's interesting because uh, they will get um, um, they will get fee for, uh, for for including transactions in blocks. So they are motivated to to keep this uh, state of the network and uh, consensus of this network. Uh, the uh, second idea, which we uh, borrowed from. Uh, from, from pure network uh, to this side chain is about uh, on-chain governance. Uh, it helped us to bootstrap and launch the network, which operates for uh, um, 10 months. And uh, this uh, new side chain will use uh, master nodes, and, uh, uh, but uh, will have different type of um, uh, ceremony. So this network will bootstrap with uh, uh, master nodes, which will be auctioned uh, in public. Uh, and uh, master nodes will use on-chain governance to um, modify what we call validator set. Validator set is a list of validators who can create blocks in the network. So usually that validator set is uh, the essential part of, proof of, authority, of, of any proof of authority type of network. Um, usually we think about uh, proof of authority as a centralized uh, permission consensus, uh, but in POA network this uh, consensus bootstrapped uh, um, by initial ceremony, and uh, in this ceremony this um, uh, consensus created with the uh, first initial set of validators, and after um, access to this uh, uh, validator set was given to, um, to validators, so they onboard new validators themselves. So they don't need to, um, to rely to any third party, and they're independent uh, parties within this validator set. So that's how POA network achieves uh, a form of decentralization. Okay, so essential part networking player uh, and uh, um, like level one of, uh, of, of, uh, of Zuchin is Honey Badger BFT. So this consensus uh, algorithm created by Andrew Miller uh, in 2016. Um, and uh, I think uh, we are one of the first chain which uh, uh, implemented uh, this paper in full uh, with uh, all tests. Uh, so I did hear that uh, Honey Badger is a, is a BFT uh, al algorithm. It means that uh, all blocks created by validators are final. Uh, so Honey Badger is, uh, is asynchronous. Uh, it means that there are no uh, assumptions about uh, timing of uh, block uh, creation. For example, uh, if the network is under heavy DDoS attack, uh, the, uh, the blocks will be created slowly. There, it's not like in Tendermint when, um, uh, you, uh, when block is not created in, in, a, in, a, in a specific time frame, uh, 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 algorithm is not working. Um, censorship resistant uh, uh, internal sen uh, um, asynchronous and asynchronousy of honey badgers uh, is external censorship resistance, right? So, um, uh, if the network is under DDoS, uh, then um, uh, then validators will create blocks slowly, right? But uh, also we have uh, internal censorship. What if uh, some validators will try to censor some some transactions? Uh, for 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 this uh, censorship resistance, we have um, uh, something that uh, uh, some internal part of honey badger. Uh, um, validators or master nodes in, in Honey Badger operate on, on encrypted data. And uh, if a uh, networking environment are um, uh, optimal, then uh, each node see all, all messages. Uh, but in adversary uh, scenarios, uh, um, environment uh, uh, validators operate only on a subset of, uh, uh, of data. Uh, but after the block is created, the, uh, uh, all validators agreed on full set of data. So that's, uh, uh, that's assumptions of the algorithms, and, um, uh, and actually this algorithm uh, was not implemented because it's uh, one of the hardest to implement consensus algorithm. 
Um, um, here you can see some, some links uh, to our implementation. We have a, a Rust library which implements uh, um, seven sub protocols of the algorithm and uh, uh, threshold uh, crypto library and the peer to peer network uh, with a Honey Badger which you, know, you can use for, uh, for playing with this consensus algorithm. So, sub protocols. Um, there are um, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, sub protocols uh, described in paper and, and, and some uh, sub protocols which we um, <coughs> created ourselves, extended the, the, the algorithm. The idea here why we uh, needed to, to have dynamic honey badger because uh, the, original, uh, the original protocol didn't support uh, uh, extend, uh, extension to, to, to a list of validators. So each time you need to add or remove a validator from the network, you have to reinitialize the consensus. Here we have a, we added a special role called observer. So this role observe uh, uh, all uh, all system messages, and if validators vote in for a, for a new validator from 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 a list of uh, observers, this observer is onboarded to to a list of validators. Um, so it's uh, it's important to remember the difference between uh, consensus algorithms and Zebel control mechanisms. So consensus algorithm agrees on on uh, on a set of messages uh, synchronized between. Uh, um, between validators, basically, and uh, Zebel control is this uh, mechanism decides uh, who are validators, right? Uh, and uh, in the in in, uh, in PoA and Zoo network, uh, this uh, Zebel control mechanism uh, uh, is implemented in smart contracts, um, and uh, smart contracts uh, are hooked to consensus, and uh, they are part of the consensus, right? So validators have dApps where each validator can propose. Uh, uh, a new validator to add to this validator set uh, or propose uh, remove validator from the validator set. So governance of these uh, uh, networks in the hands of, of validators. Um, so uh, summarizing it, we have a, a cryptographic consensus uh, which uh, uh, protects a network from uh, censorship, external and internal censorship. Um, and the uh, question is how to distribute nodes. And uh, we think that uh, uh, in, in, in this uh, zone network, we'll distribute them using uh, public auction. So we will um, um, basically sell this uh, master nodes uh, on uh, somewhere. Um, if you have any ideas uh, how to distribute the initial nodes, yeah, sure. No, I was going to ask you about this. It's like, when you bootstrap, you could actually have very effective attacks on you. Do you think that's something you would yeah, that's that's, okay, so that's pretty much done. So yeah, that's why it's trusted ceremony, right? Um, all the time. Uh, and um, well, when when we uh, when we bootstrap POA network, uh, we had a role master of ceremonies who created the network, and he created the first set of keys uh, and distributed these keys to initial validators. And uh, after validators added new validators, and uh, validators whom master of ceremony doesn't know added more validators than uh, uh, validators he onboarded. So he has less friends uh, of, of him within the network. But it's a, uh, yeah, all, all bootstrapping ceremonies, like most boot bootstrapping ceremonies uh, uh, are attack vector. Um, good thing about uh, this type of uh, consensus and zebel control, that if you think that uh, consensus itself is secure and audited, uh, and um, proven in production, but you don't like set of validators, you can bootstrap the network yourself, right? You can yeah, take this. You, the you need probably three things, right? You need to have like a bootstrap in a protocol, a third state, and a pair down. In most protocols, which I have seen, don't have a pair down. Effectively, what that means is if you want to really have a pair down, you just fuck the system and bring the new one out. There's no what you call a safe. Um, yeah, well, uh, um, th th there are multiple approaches, right, to, to, to solve this problem. Um, we, I, I'll talk about how we plan to bootstrap the network uh, a little bit. I uh, just want to say that uh, Honey Badger BFT is, uh, is uh, fully implemented uh, uh, with the paper and, uh, and extended with Dynamic Honey Badger uh, and uh, some other sub protocols. Um, also, we extended uh, it with uh, um, some other uh, interesting options. And because there is a common coin uh, algorithm within the, the paper, uh, we assume that uh, Honey Badger also can produce randomness. 
uh, which is uh, very interesting for uh, for Ethereum based networks, right? Because there is there is no um, um, there is no a uh, good way to produce uh, randomness on EVM chains at the moment, uh, to produce randomness uh, on consensus level. And um, we think that uh, this uh, will bring more use cases to EVM-based chains, right? Like gambling, uh, uh, games, and so forth. Um, yeah, algorithm is fully implemented. Uh, um, you, can, uh, you, can, uh, you can run um, Hydra Badger with uh, Hydra Badger with networking layer. Uh, modified and it's created for, for experimentation. So if you're interested in embedding this algorithm into your product, feel free. Uh, also, uh, it, it shows uh, uh, pretty good uh, uh, throughput, uh, uh, transaction throughput uh, parameters. For example, now we start at uh, 1,000 transactions per batch uh, with uh, 10 nodes and uh, bandwidth uh, to make a bit between nodes and the network lag 100 milliseconds, which is like normal condition. And we can see that uh, 1,000 transactions per second produced, uh, uh, like uh, each, each second, we have a batch of 1,000 transactions per second agreed by, by 10 nodes, which is quite good for, for, for the asynchronous BFT consensus uh, um, with uh, final blocks. So that's what we can get from, from Honey Badger easily. 1,000 uh, transactions per second, uh, final blocks. Uh, well, that's actually that. We don't need this in the in, uh, in current state of dApps because uh, uh, the, the, there is no dApp which uh, uh, which needs this transaction throughput at the moment, right? Um, so I just want to say that uh, uh, Honey BFT is done, and uh, uh, this is an essential part of uh, uh, of our privacy preserving chart, right? Censorship resistant consensus with uh, uh, both external and external and internal censorship protection. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that's about your question. So uh, initial participation validator set decided by trusted ceremony, so the ceremony. Uh, and after changes in this validator set uh, decided by on-chain governance. Um, so details, when we, uh, when we bootstrap uh, uh, the network, uh, uh, master of ceremonies will create some, some initial keys and uh, lock them in, in an auction smart contract. And after, uh, Master node seeds will be distributed uh, using the auction, public auction. So, uh, market will determine the price uh, and uh, determine who will get these seeds. And after master nodes using on chain government, governance uh, can modify a list of validators on their own and use this as a protocol upgrade. Um, just, um, just a simple uh, uh, view of how it works for, uh, for POA network. So, this is, uh, this is not for Zoo network, this is for POA for existing network. Yeah, each validator can propose a ballot, uh, and uh, you know information about all ballots available on chain. So it's a part of, of consensus, and uh, and you can see that, for example, for this ballot, validators voted 15 yes, uh, zero against out of 21 to change a key of a validator. So all governance events are available to um, to third party, uh, and also a list of validators also uh, available uh, to to audit and to review. Well, the validators uh, in Zoo network will be without identity, uh, but you can um, you, you can check how they changed their identity, uh, how they changed the ownership of or, or included new master nodes. Um, so this is a part of, of governance, um, and also the important part of um, of R&D process, which we developed for uh, for for POI network, and we would like to use for uh, for this uh, privacy preserving chart is uh, interrupt protocol. So our interoperability protocol, based on uh, on uh, initial version of Parity Bridge, after we forked out uh, in November. So it's it's a, it's a separate product, uh, and we launched uh, what we think the first uh, cross-chain two-way packet bridge uh, back in May. Uh, and this bridge uh, is in production. I just want to show you some some stats uh, and uh, and explain how this bridge will will be used uh, in uh, in uh, privacy preserving chart. Um, so current bridge uh, transferred about 30 million of, of tokens uh, back and forth uh, for 125 token holders. Uh, and um, this bridge holds 5 million tokens at the moment on both sides. Um, so it's native to ERC20 bridge. Um, uh, users from sidechain can lock their coins on, on, uh, on, uh, on sidechain and uh, uh, the, uh, the bridge will create a ERC20 representation of this token uh, on Ethereum mainnet. Uh, interesting here that um, um, between two networks there, are a group, there is a group of uh, independent validators. So these validators are independent, non-affiliated with each other. Um, so there is a, a 
uh, decentralized consensus on one side of the, uh, of the bridge, decentralized consensus on another side of, of the bridge, and also uh, threshold signature between networks. Uh, so technically, uh, legally speaking, this bridge not constitutes money transmitting services, so it can be used without KYC and AML. Um, and if you heard about stories about you know uh, shapeshift and uh, and uh, other services, uh, now regulators are you know, looking to to close all these uh, uh, centralized uh, interoperability solutions without KYC. So bridges can be um, uh, a, a short, uh, immediately available solution for this type of transactions. Um, so good thing about bridge that bridge can be used not only for like one hop but for multi hop transactions, and that we think. That will be usage for for our privacy preserving sidechain. For example, if I want to transfer 20,000 of POA token from POA network to Ethereum network, I have to press one button and also uh, this uh, uh, this check that uh, I understand what I'm doing. So I'm 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 sending 1,600 dollars from network to network in the moment, and it takes only 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 one click, right? And I'm in possession of my private key, and uh, there is no party who can stop me from sending this money because none of validators who are responsible from for cross chain transaction. Um, uh, can modify my transaction or block it. They need to, um, they need to break uh, this uh, consensus uh, between them. Uh, so two of them should collude uh, uh, and, um, well, not, not delay my transaction. Uh, but uh, it's something that uh, uh, legally called uh, um, pub public service uh, by, by private actor. And uh, if they agreed to follow the protocol, they have to do this or stop, right? They cannot uh, change the protocol themselves. So that's what they agreed on. Um, and um, well, the, the bridge is waiting for eight blocks because uh, Ethereum mainnet and PO network are not final because their consensus is not final. Uh, not like Honey Badger BFT, which is instantly final and we don't need this type of uh, uh, checks. And after uh, the, the validators waiting for, for eight blocks, they will submit a transaction to another network and they will mint new tokens. Um, so this way we transferred um, $1,600 from network to network um, and uh, this uh, bridge token will be immediately available on, uh, on, uh, on, 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 on Ethereum network and can be used on Bancor or other, other networks. Why do we need them on there? Because we have access to other liquidity providers uh, for example, we can send this uh, bridge token to Vancor, and on Vancor we can convert them to other ERC20 tokens. Or we can use multi-hop transactions. Think about this, we take a, a native token on sidechain, right? Send it to a privacy preserving shard. Break chain of custody and send from this privacy preserving shard to another chain, to Ethereum. And on Ethereum we have uh, this uh, clean uh, tokens, which we can uh, use on, on any exchange. Um, and uh, I understand that there are some uh, uh, negative use cases for, for, for this type of multi-hop transactions, but, uh, but also um, there are some, some use cases why we are all here, right? Um, and um, that's, um, that's an important part of, uh, of uh, why, we built, uh, why, we, why we are building privacy pre pre preserving uh, sidechain. Uh, to have it uh, <coughs> as a shard in, in multi-hop uh, uh, interrupt protocols. Okay, so tokens received. Last step took a lot of time, right? Because, because of, you know why? Any, any ideas? Uh, well, because the uh, last transaction was on Ethereum mainnet, and blocks on Ethereum mainnet uh, are you know, full, almost all of them, or selfish mined, right? So like some validators, uh, miners don't include transactions at all. But most blocks are, are clogged, right? So that, that's why we need um, sidechains also. Okay, so after we transferred these uh, ERC20 tokens, we have them here, and you can see that you know 1600 uh, POA20, which is an ERC20 representation of this uh, native token, is available on uh, um, on mainnet. And after we can go to Bancor, and on Bancor we can sell this uh, token to um, to to another net. To another token, right? We can, but well, we need to switch to uh, mainnet, and after, and after mainnet, we'll have this um, um, PO20, PO20 token available, and we can sell, for example, thousands of tokens, buy something, I don't know, whatever, BMC. Uh, don't know what is it. Uh, hmm, don't want to sell. Um, so it's, it's, it's on, okay, let's take another one, uh, <laughs> Storm, uh, let's 
style. So let's buy some storm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so we we just we 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 should sell it and okay. Okay. So transaction is a progress, and uh, we converted native token to ERC twenty without KYC ML. Converted uh, one token to another without KYC and ML, but we still have um, um, chain of custody, so it's, it's easy to track. But with uh, this uh, uh, shard, we can we can break this chain. So why do we need shard? Why not to do this uh, on chain? Well, again, uh, uh, cryptography is, uh, is expensive on Ethereum mainnet, and uh, and uh, the network itself is plugged, and also the network is under surveillance. And uh, most services we use are uh, connecting to Ethereum are you know centralized, like Infura. And uh, most likely they sell our data, um, and um, uh, or or at least share. Um, so that's uh, that, 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 that's why uh, this uh, uh, anti-surveillance uh, things can be uh, easily implemented on on, on side chains. For example, validators can can uh, agree on protocol upgrade and uh, and have all validators run over, for example, uh, onion routing. What prevents us uh, from doing the same on, on Ethereum mainnet, right? Ethereum mainnet requires UDP, and, uh, and it's harder to, to implement, uh, for example, um, Tor network between all miners. Well, it's not it's not interesting for them. But here, all all master nodes can uh, can operate uh, in uh, over I2P or, or Tor, and um, yeah, that's that, that's that's how we see um, this uh, shards. Um, so that's that's the second part, which is. Um, uh, which is uh, interrupt, uh, and uh, the, the the missing part here is uh, uh, what actually will uh, will uh, make a transaction privacy. And uh, from 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 our perspective, uh, there are multiple good solutions here, uh, and uh, some of them are presented here. Um, and uh, we think that uh, combining uh, flexibility of, uh, of side chains plus um, um, interrupt protocols uh, plus uh, censorship resistant consensus algorithm. And uh, new form of uh, zebra control algorithm uh, mechanisms, which are which incentivize validators uh, to act uh, for interest of the network, but also allows uh, users to quit the network uh, easily. Right? If you if the market cap of this privacy preserving shard is like hundred either, it's it's quite easy to uh, to if if something is wrong with this uh, 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 shard, it's it's quite easy to go to another shard, uh, or community will fork it and, and will follow some rules. Um, but also, this uh, uh, the shards will be essential part of uh, multi-hop uh, interoperability uh, protocols to break chain of custody. Basically, that's what is important. Um, yeah, that's um, that's uh, the, the the main part uh, of our talk. And um, um, yeah, any any questions? Right, sure. Um, so you said zoo, zoo chain is also union based. Yeah, that's right. Did you fork that off some code base, or did you really use another code base? Um, yeah, so we, uh, we're working with Parity, and uh, the, uh, this, this uh, consensus algorithm will be embedded into Parity client. So it's agreed. And also, we have uh, <coughs> our own implementation of Ethereum client, which is uh, almost passing uh, um, Byzantium tests. So we're close to uh, full client. It's called MANA. Mana because it's written in Elixir, which is a, a, a language created for distributed systems. Uh, so we're working on our own implementation of, uh, of this client, and this client will have uh, this privacy-preserving features. So that's our interest. Um, and also, uh, you know, that's that's the first use case when people will uh, transfer assets from network to network. That's important. Uh, but you know, there are other. Uh, recently, I, uh, I traveled uh, back to my home country, to Russia, and presented uh, a game which is deployed on POA network. It's called Docrator. And uh, in Russia, it's, uh, it's illegal to, to call Coke, Coke, and weed, weed. <laughs> so you have to, you have to replace this. Uh, yeah, and, and I played uh, uh, on, on stage, and I had to you know, replace, uh, because it's, it was live streamed, right? If, uh, if people will see that I'm, I'm playing this and, and naming Coke, Coke, I can go to jail for promoting uh, uh, Narc or something, right? Um, um, but yeah, that, that, that game illustrates how, um, uh, how fast and, uh, and, uh, and interesting sidechains are for, uh, uh, for, 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 for real world applications. Uh, when I say how fast, it's usually not, it's not working. 
Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, any, any other questions? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm um, also curious, so when you said earlier the values are being involved in, is that, really, is that something like a token of registry under the colors, or is that just literally a hard list and the signature from X or so on so many main nodes to go to the end, or how do you? Yeah, uh, uh, protocol. So pro protocol describes uh, 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 threshold, uh, thresholds uh, in in, uh, in any public uh, uh, voting. For example, to vote in or vote out validator, uh, any validator from validator set can propose a ballot, and uh, minimum uh, time for this ballot uh, um, to be open is 72 hours, right? And minimal required vote is three. But validators can think, okay. We need more time, or we need more votes, and they can upgrade the protocol and increase this threshold. But there is a need of supermajority to increase this threshold, and this uh, this um, uh, consensus is uh, is audited by by multiple companies. Uh, the one of the most uh, 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 well known is Chain Security from ETH Zurich. Um, so they they audited uh, the 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 on chain governance, uh, and and basically it works uh, how it's designed. Um, and it supports uh, not only this uh, uh, changing of validator set and upgrading uh, um, thresholds, but also supports uh, native to native bridge. Because when you think native to native bridge, it, it, it's hard to implement. Because usually consensus uh, algorithms within cryptocurrency have uh, uh, very have fixed uh, um, em emission rate, right? And this emission rate is usually uh, hard to change, right? Like uh, uh, changing of emission rate in Ethereum right now. Like from three to two, it's, it's very hard. And also it should be approved by miners, right? And miners can say yes, can say no. And um, um, so that's, uh, that's, that, that's hard. But with native to native bridge, um, you, have a, you have a hook uh, from, uh, from governance smart contracts um, and if this governance smart contract can say, okay, if uh, a coin is locked uh, on, uh, uh, on uh, Ethereum networks and uh, validators for a subset of validators of this uh, Zoo network uh, seen this uh, uh, event on, uh, on, on, um, on Ethereum network, then they're allowed to mine uh, the same amount of native tokens on, on Zoo network. Um, and, but you know, what if the, those validators are hacked? Right, so that, that's why uh, we put uh, limits and quotas uh, on smart contracts, so we know like, uh, we know uh, damage that can be ca caused by, by hackers or by attackers. For example, on POA network, it's uh, three million tokens on this uh, bridge. So if, if uh, validators, like three validators, two validators out of three are hacked, uh, then we know that damage is uh, three million POA tokens at maximum that we can mm, lose uh, on, the, on, on, on the chain. Yeah, basically, validators set uh, updated by validators. They have governance depths and some, uh, and also it's important not only about write, not only about how you change this validator set, but also how you get information from the blockchain. So we have uh, statistics, um, which is uh, which is important for governance process. Um, uh, it's called pure balance stats. Um, uh, pure ballot status of validators can run these uh, tools on their computer and they can see how, uh, how validators are voting. For example, here on this screenshot, we, see, we can see that Mr. Jefferson Flowers, who's a validator from California on POA network, uh, is not participating in 46% uh, uh, <laughs> of, uh, of governance events. Right? And other validators can ask him you know, why you're not participating. Um, and uh, why aren't you participating? And uh, that's uh, that's kind of decentralized tool. No one can stop you from uh, querying the network and getting these governance events. And also, there is one more tool with notification services, so you can subscribe to these notification events and you can get information when these governance events are happening. And uh, there is no one who can stop you from getting these events. Right? So that's a, that's a part of transparent um, um, governance. Uh, th this part is built for, for, for POA, it, it works, works well, so validator onboarded more and more validator uh, and uh, removed some validator and had some, you know, lost keys and so forth. So this, this is a process which works without us, it's, just, they, it's their own network, they, they, they create ballots, they have their own, you know, games within. Um, uh, and, uh, and we think that the same uh, governance can be used uh, uh, to, to bootstrap new networks. 
even though we don't know who are validate, who validate us are, we can use it and um, and get benefits. Uh, and what what is the benefit of, of having this type of on chain governance? Uh, the main benefit is that uh, you can you can launch this network and get security assumptions with a much cheaper price. Right for for this, you don't need this proof of work uh, type of thing. Um, yeah, the operator. I don't know if it's. <laughs> So this is like this is an example. Well, it, it, that's interesting enough, right? Because this game can be easily banned in Russia or in China or in Thailand, right? Because when you to to be successful in this game, you have to buy seeds and uh, and bring the seeds to another district and uh, and uh, grow the seeds and get weed and sell this weed uh, and um, uh, sell this weed, get profit, and do it again and again and again. And when you see someone with weed, you rate him and you get his weed, right? So that's, um, I think this is the most advanced uh, uh, RPG game uh, on Ethereum uh, platforms. Uh, and let's utilize all, all, um, all benefits of, of side chains. But uh, it's, it's, it's possible to imagine that uh, this type of game will be banned or restricted uh, somewhere in some jurisdiction. So uh, this game, uh, like instance of this game can be deployed on a, on a privacy preserver sidechain where, where we don't know who validators are. This network exists somewhere in Tor. Validators are, uh, are connected to, to each other in Tor. Uh, but RPC, you can find RPC somewhere. Um, but uh, mm, yeah, you can, basically you cannot stop it because you don't know who operates this network. And operators operate this network because they have incentives. They get transaction fee, and this transaction fee um, covers their expenses for their hosting. So that's uh, that's economic of this uh, of this zoo EVM chains, um, yeah. And uh, we think that uh, gas price can be pegged to US dollars or BTC. Uh, it's kind of an unpopular idea, but on zoo network we'll have it pegged to BTC or to um, uh, to US dollar because it's it's easier to um, for, for 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 games like like the operator. It's easier to um, have this you know stable gas price. And tune economy so far. No questions? Anymore? Yeah, hi, Mike. There was also some uh, threshold crypto library stream yeah. at some point. So what's that? It's a part of uh, uh, it's part of Honey Badger. So we <coughs> decided to actually there is a um, there is an idea uh, in, in the Rust community to to get uh, all these crypto libraries and combine them like in one package. Um, uh, and support this for for us community. So it's uh, uh, Nikolai Wolf from Parity is uh, uh, thinking about this, and um, yeah, that's uh, we also decided to uh, to remove it from Honey Badger, and um, mm, yeah, it's uh, it's well documented. So um, yeah, with tests and uh, details. So what else? Nothing. So guys, let's play the operator then. <laughs> yeah, it's most advanced dApp. Oh, let me show you. Let me show you future. Um, so that's what I like a lot. So usually when we when we use dApps, right, we use MetaMask because uh, it's essential part. And just think about MetaMask. It's like one Google account. Someone can upload a binary, and this binary will you know steal coins from you know all the people who use MetaMask. Um, so it's a uh, it's very dangerous thing, right? And we don't control uh, MetaMask deployment. We cannot say, okay, guys, we don't want to use it. And big security risk. Second part is that MetaMask is an uh, uh, external thing to the application, right? We have to install it, and um, and it's it's not a part of the website. And, uh, but this thing. And it's called Portis. It's a SDK with a wallet which is embedded into the web page. So you remember when I when I submitted transaction here, uh, I had this. Uh, this is a fork of uh, of MetaMask by us, uh, which is intended to be faster and um, with uh, uh, optimized for games. But this window popped up, right? And, um, and uh, like every time I have this MetaMask window popped up. Uh, but uh, in, in this Portis wallet, I can, I can, okay, can you, it's 
find someone. I don't need to read this person, but you can see that uh, uh, like MetaMask-like notification appeared here, and uh, and I can do like this, right? Uh, and I can submit transaction without MetaMask. So games can can embed wallet within the game interface. And was MetaMask used, uh, used by the web application? MetaMask used by web application. Oh. Yeah, mostly mostly. As an, as an API, talking to your like extension. Um, no, the, the, this this thing is not, is not using MetaMask. I don't see. I don't. I don't have MetaMask here. It's just it's just SDK embedded within the the, the web page. Yeah, private keys are uh, encrypted by my password, and password is hashed and stored somewhere. Right. So yeah. who is seeing the uh, who is basically signing the transaction? Uh, I'm signing the transaction uh, on uh, in in the browser. Oh. So every time. So who prevents? Uh, who prevents? Uh, like whoever hosts this web page to. Uh, it's 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 that. Huh? You can you can download this page on your computer. Well, so it's a depth. Without there is there is no backend here. So it's a uh, it's a. Uh, yeah, well, sure, but but who prevents uh, like the source of this page? <coughs> well, unless you download and expect it to replace this JavaScript with something malicious. Mm, well. That's kind of my. Yeah, that's that, that's 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 a, that's a problem with any web app, right? Uh, so, sure. Yeah. That's so. The, uh, my point of MetaMask, I guess. Mm, that, that's right, but uh, but uh, it's a. Uh, is, is the private key in local storage yeah. or in the actual HTML? Uh, in local storage. So if it's in local storage, you can just inspect yeah. the key. You cannot take yeah, inspect. Sure, sure. But you can use, for example, your account which is local But still, you control you control your sure. your private key some, yeah. in some form, right? Not 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 the game. Right. Yeah. And uh, and experience is is much smoother. Like, yeah, there's there are no pop-ups. You don't need to install uh, additional extension. You can play on mobile. Right? You can open it on Safari, and it works on on, on any device. Um, so that's that's the future so of. Uh, this one is running right now on QA network. Yep. Yeah. Then the. The the most exciting thing about uh, uh, about this uh, about this game is that uh, the whole economy is based on on POE, uh, and uh, when I when I do any action, for example, now I want to buy some uh, uh, some seeds to increase um, to to well when I buy them right to produce wheat. This uh, 20 POE will go into economy, and they will raise price of weed and coke. So people can go to this location and sell their weed and coke and uh, and get profits, because what I purchased went to to the economy. Okay, so I purchased for 20 POE. 20 POE is in the economy of Jamaica Village. I go to Chinatown. I travel. So this is all based on smart contracts. And each economy has its own. Yeah, that's right. So the there is there is no backend server here. And this is all like on the main chain. Or yeah, so it's all on main chain. So it's all about money. So now you see, like I I travel. Yeah, it's it's a it's a well, it's a main chain of period. It was on Ethereum, but on Ethereum it's uh, you know it's it's, uh, it's expensive and slow. It's basically they migrated from from Ethereum to to POE. Uh, and here I can produce. So I can go to produce, and they can produce wheat, or and it costs 73 cents, right, to produce it. And I can produce eight ounces of coke, which is uh, 92 cents. And now I can go to another location and sell it. And uh, but wh while I am having it, some people can attack me and then try to get it from me. Right? So that um, and. Um, yeah, I like the, the the experience and the speed and you know that your transactions always included in blocks 
and uh, you don't feel transaction cost, you know, this, how, how much each item costs in the game. And uh, while price is going up and down, you can see some difference, but also they can tweak prices. So uh, transactions per second does the POA network just right now? What? what? How many transactions per second does the POA network? Uh, this, uh, right now it's about 60 transactions, 60, 60. But, uh, you know, the problem here is not about transactions per second, it's how to get, uh, um, how to get users. It's, uh, Let's see how many transactions. Yeah, it's our blocks. You can see that. Oh, 60 transactions per second. Now, like blocks are empty, right? Um, so, so it has also 8 million gas in the. Oh, it's uh, 8 million gas, yeah, right. So just to follow um, if you don't mind that. What's the initial bottleneck behind the 60 transactions per second What? What's the bottleneck? Why? Why? What? Yeah, well, you can do you can do more. So that's uh, that's uh, that's a good thing about uh, if you if you remember there's, uh, that that uh, validators can do uh, uh, protocol upgrades, right, and vertical scalability. They can say, okay, guys, we have more transactions uh, than we can hold now. Oh, no, you know, new games can go to another chain, or we can increase our hardware. Let's all increase our hardware. On all nodes, so master nodes can make this uh, vertical scalability decision and increase from 8 million, I don't know, to 10 million, 15 million, 100 million, whatever. Um, and that's that's a that's a good thing about uh, on-chain governance because you cannot get this agreement on proof of work type of networks. Yeah. On POA, you can they can decide yeah, for, and if if token holders will not like it, they can migrate their tokens using bridges. So that's, that's a good thing about bridges. If you don't like the network, okay, you use bridges and move to your assets. Okay, see you on the next panel. <laughs> okay, guys, that's it. Cool, thanks. Yeah. Thank you.